along with us on the Clover Olive Pride Chefs Tour, a proudly South African cooking journey through the towns and dishes that made foodie heroes, such as the champion of traditional African cuisine, Luyanda Mafanya, master of fine dining, Chef Ruben Riffle, and proud flag bearer of National Bride Day, Yan Bry. Made with Olive Pride, prepare to be proud. With love from Vilakazi Street, this week on the Olive Pride Chef's Tour, food blogger Loyanda Mafania takes creative license to dish up her own new twist on a heritage dish. My time in Soweto was absolutely amazing. I got to be immersed in the culture, in the food, in the music. Everything about Vilakazi Street really inspired me to create this really hearty dish, something very close to my heart, a hug from the inside. So today I'll be making a beef stew, caramelized onion dumplings, and for that freshness, I'll be making a gremolata. So I'll be using stewing beef. It's a nice cut of meat, which is slow cooked and becomes very tender the longer you cook it. Some people like it on the bone, some people like it off the bone. Today I'm using meat that is off the bone. Now I'm gonna season it with some salt and some pepper. Then I will drizzle it with some Olive Pride blend. I'm using the Olive Pride blend because it's got the taste of an olive oil and the properties of a normal oil, meaning it's great for stews and cooking on high heats. Now I'm going to cube my potatoes. I'm leaving my skin on, I like all the nutrients that come with it. Now I'm doing my carrots. I'm going to cut them into discs for some texture. And this also brings out a bit of color into my stew. And lastly, I'm gonna chop my onion finely, and this is gonna be a nice base flavor for the stew. And who has stew without onion? Just, that's the most important question, actually. All my prep is done, as you can see, so now let's get cooking. Now I'm going to add a spoonful of the Olive Pride fat spread. This is gonna add some creaminess and enhance the olive oil flavor in the dish. And now I'm gonna drizzle some oil just so that the butter doesn't burn. And then lastly, I'm gonna add my meat to the pot. My meat is in, the pot is on a high heat. I'm gonna do it for two, three minutes on each side. I want it to be golden brown on all sides before adding my other ingredients. My meat is done, it's beautifully brown, and this is really achieved by making sure my pot is not overcrowded. Overcrowding makes steam, and this means that we won't get the beautiful brown color that we want. This is a perfect time for me to add my spices. I'm starting with my steak and chopped spice, and then I'm going to add my garlic and herb spice. I'm gonna give this a good mix, make sure it's all coated with the spices, and then I'm going to add my onions, and cook them until they are translucent. While my onion is cooking, I'm definitely scraping the bottoms just to get all that caramelization because it adds to the deeper flavor of this stew. The onions are looking good now. I'm gonna add my beef stock cubes. I'm gonna sprinkle them all over. This helps them dissolve easier with the water. The beef is simmering, it's looking good, it's getting thicker, and this is a perfect time to add my chopped tomato. Then I'm adding my tomato paste for that extra depth of tomato flavor in my stew. I'm gonna mix that up and leave that to simmer and get thicker before adding my carrots and potatoes. My meat looks absolutely amazing, it's tender, and this is the perfect time to add my potatoes and carrots. I'm adding it later simply because I do not want it to get too soft, too early, and become mushy. I'm gonna give it a mix, make sure it's well combined. I'm gonna cover it, and now time for the dumplings. Dumplings are the perfect comfort food, and they go well with any hearty dish. But today I'm adding a twist, and I'm gonna caramelize onions and add them to my dumpling. And what do we have? Caramelized onion dumplings. Caramelized onions need a lot of attention. You don't want them sticking together or burning, so you need to stay near your stove and make sure you give them as much attention as possible. 
for my dumplings, I'm gonna start with my flour, pouring it in. Then I'm adding my baking powder. Then I'm gonna add my sugar. And then I'm gonna combine all the dry ingredients so they are fully mixed. Then I'm gonna rub in my butter. Give it a good rub so it combines with the flour. And then I'm gonna finish off with some milk. I'm gonna slightly knead, but not too much because at this stage I wanna add my caramelized onions. One thing I absolutely love about these stew is growing up my grandparents had so many cows so every time we'd visit a beef stew would be on the menu. We eat every single part of the cow from head to tail and beef stew was one of my favorite dishes growing up. My dumplings are ready to go in. I've made them nice and small because when they cook they do usually double in size so I'm going to put them in for 15 minutes to cook. Villegazi Street was so vibrant and colorful and I was inspired to bring that vibrance and colorfulness to my dish and I've decided to add some gremolata to finish it off and add some freshness. I've made my gremolata nice and chunky so you get a pop of freshness every time you get into a bite of the beef stew. This looks and smells absolutely amazing. I can't wait to dig in. And there you have it, my beef stew with caramelized onion dumplings and gramolata. Lou, something smells real good in here. Yep. Remy, I made you an amazing beef stew with caramelized onion dumpling. I want you to try that. I hope you'll be proud. Oh, of course I will. Let me try it. Oh, yeah. What do you think? Mmm. <laughs> mm, this tastes so, so, so good. Let me give it a try. And let's see. Mmm. I'm so tender. Mm. So what do you think about the dumpling? Oh my, I love the onion in it, oh my. I tried in one bite with all the pieces of the meat and the gremolata. Mmm, 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 mmm. It's good. Mm. I know you'll be copying my recipe, her. Of course I will. <laughs> and I hope you will try this recipe with olive pride. Prepare to be proud. From Gauteng to KZN, Next week on the Olive Pride Chef's Tour, Ruben Riffle finds sunny, luscious Durban a treat for the eye, but it's the aromas of the Victoria Spice Market which most seduce the senses. Getting his very own garam masala mixed on site, Ruben then surrenders to that spicy legend of South African street foods, the bunny.